everybody. Happy Wednesday. All right. Happy Wednesday. I am Melissa Johnson. I am a gold leader with doTERRA. I lead a global wellness community. Um, and I'm going to talk about being near in your home today. So I've got uh, my Facebook, Essential Oil Parlor Community here. Um, I'm live streaming, streaming on my own Instagram account, account called in the stories called the Central Oil Parlor. And then I am also doing um, a Zoom to upload to my YouTube channel that I just launched yesterday, the Essential Oil, or it's Essential Oil Parlor. So I want to talk today about why we want clean air in our home. So uh, with pollution being an ever-present issue, in modern times, uh, most people probably assume that the air is safer indoors than it is outdoors. But on average, most people spend about 90% of their time indoors. However, most homes have air pollution two to five times greater than the air outside. But it's okay. We have some solutions to help you to fix that. So by making a few small, simple changes around your home, uh, the air quality can dramatically improve. So there's a few things that I've done to improve the quality of the air in our home. And um, I'm gonna talk about those in just a moment, but I wanted to also just bring light to the three deadliest pollutants so three of them that I consider the deadliest um, have the potential to harm your family's health the most. And they are carbon monoxide, secondhand smoke, and radon gas. And radon can come out of, um, why did the world word just slip my mind? Granite countertops. So to combat the first one that I talked about, which was carbon monoxide. Um, it's really important to install a carbon monoxide detector. Uh, it will alert you if the gas is present. Um, as for secondhand smoke, uh, the Surgeon General states that no amount of secondhand smoke is safe. Um, and if there are smokers around you, uh, it's really great to ask them to not smoke um, and to not <clears throat> Smoke within, um, you know, I think the law is three feet, but let's go five to six feet away from any open window, air intake um, mechanism, or doors or windows. Um, so, one of the others is that is really dangerous is that your home may be harboring a silent killer, which is radon gas, and it's the leading cause of death among non smokers and the second leading cause of lung cancers. So it's odorless, invisible, and naturally occurring, but radon testing is the only way to catch this deadly gas. So using the green approach, hi everybody that's starting to join the watch. The following five plants, so adding plants into your environment is an amazing, easy, low cost way to add or to clean the air in your home. So five of the top plants to add into your environment. The first is aloe vera. Um, this plant is not only good for um, burns and cuts and helps your skin topically with any kind of, uh, or with uh, adding in collagen, um, but it's also really great for cleaning the air in your home. One of the others is, um, so all of these plants are NASA certified as plants that can remove harmful compounds from the air. So peace lily is a really great one. 
it has the ability to improve the air quality indoors by 60%. It also helps to keep shower curtains and tiles free from mildew um, and can help or can absorb the vapors from alcohols and acetones. Um, the second is eucalyptus. Um, the leaves in the eucalyptus plant are filled with tannins that can raise healthy fluids in the body's air passages. Um, breathing the scent of the plant promotes feelings of clear breathing. And doTERRA, whom I have linked arms with and, and am a wellness advocate with, um, produces eucalyptus that comes from eucalyptus leaves. And this oil and plant has the ability to promote feelings of clear breathing and relaxation. Um, and it's the two main reasons eucalyptus makes a great house plant. The third great house plant uh, is an English ivy. This is the perfect plant for pet lovers and office workers alike. It has the ability to clean the air of airborne fecal matter and benzene, a chemical commonly found in office equipment that makes focusing difficult. The fourth plant in this pretty one, the Boston Fern, great for anyone who suffers from occasional dry skin. This plant acts as a natural humidifier. It helps restore natural or restore moisture in the air, especially in the cold winter months. It also re removes traces of formaldehyde commonly found in surface cleaners. Uh, so we're not going to go on a tangent today about greening up your clean routine. Um, we have, I have done a, I have done a live and a YouTube video on that. So you can find that here in the Central Parlor Facebook group in our community, or you can find that on my YouTube channel, Essential Oil Parlor. You can also just Google Essential Oil Parlor. Um, you can find it there. So the fifth plant is a spider plant. This is a really, really pretty plant. It's also known as a uh, mother-in-law's tongue. So the plant is, okay, so within two days of the spider plant, it removes 90% of the toxins in your home and it gets rid of harmful substances like mold and dust allergens. Um, but it's a real powerhouse in the ability to absorb formaldehyde and carbon monoxide. So it is a fantastic plant to add to your home. So some other easy ways to, to clean the air um, in your home is to take your shoes off as soon as you get home. So chances are that at some time during the day, your shoes walked across the grass in the park, in a public bathroom or across the sidewalk. And in a lot of these places, your shoes picked up a number of contaminants. Hello, Sabrina. Um, <clears throat> such as E. coli, pesticides, or formaldehyde. And when you wear shoes in your home, you run the risk of infecting your family with any of those types of toxins. So the second thing is to use correct cleaners. So this is huge, you guys, so huge. Using natural cleaners, such as our doTERRA On Guard Cleaner Concentrate, or making your own cleaning products, um, 15 drops of lemon essential oil, um, a little tiny bit of vinegar, top it with water, we'll, in an eight ounce spray bottle, will reduce, or 16 ounce, sorry, will reduce the amount of harmful gases in your home. Um, we can talk some more about DIY cleaning products if people have questions about that. Um, the third way to help to clean the air in your home is to vacuum regularly. Uh, vacuuming is one of my all time least favorite cleaning practices, but it inevitably has to happen, especially if you have plants or kids or boys or, 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 um, let's say plants, pets, pets, kids. So dust mites are a normal occurrence in any home, but they hold onto bacteria and unsavory smells. So frequent vacuuming will reduce the amount of dust mites. Uh, the fourth way is to change the air filter at least every three months in your um, air circulating system in your home. So maybe that's your, your furnace or you've got a heat pump. So this will keep the dust mites and the bacteria away as well and is especially important if you have pets to ensure moisture does not take over your home and aid in the growth of mold. Run fans in the bathroom and open your windows frequently. 
So right now with uh, it being gloriously sunny outside, it is a great time uh, to have the windows open and the fans going. Um, so the fifth way is one of my most favorite and easy ways to clean the air in your home is to use essential oils. Um, now, here's the thing. Not all essential oils are created equally, and that's something that I really want people to, to just sit with for a moment. Um, so you've maybe heard me talk a lot about this, but if you're new and you haven't uh, followed me or or listen to me talk about essential oils before, um, then you must know that there is no board that governs the essential oil industry, which means any old Joe Blow could be distilling lavender in his backyard or whatever, slapping a 100% pure their label on the bottle and selling it. And maybe he's added solvents, maybe he's used pesticides to keep the bugs off, maybe um, he's it's not a very good high therapeutic grade uh, lavender, but more importantly, 90% of the essential oils, and I'm not, I'm not kidding you, 90% of the essential oils that are readily available on the market today are made by a man in a lab, woman or a man in a lab, I swear to you. So if you are somebody who wants to be greening up the air that quality in your home or in your environment and surroundings, you do not want to be diffusing or using those types of oils in your home because they're going to be right up there with the plugins and the sprays and the chemical cleaners and all of that junk that we are trying to stay away from. So using essential oils and blends. So doTERRA offers an amazing blend to purify. It's our cleansing blend. Our On Guard is our protective blend. That's a great blend. Juniper berry is really good. Lemon, lime, any of the citruses, grapefruit, tangerine, wow, orange is so good. Uh, tea tree, otherwise known as Melaleuca, with in our uh, US doTERRA market. They all contain powerful cleansing properties. So I bet that many of us spend a great deal of time indoors and we either work from home or we work in an office. Um, not a, so just by adding a plant or two and making other simple changes like your cleaning and the, air, or the, the, the things that you're using to clean up, if you're trying to clean up or freshen the air, um, the air quality in your surroundings can improve radically by adding some plants, changing your cleaning regimens to a natural essential oil. I highly recommend doTERRA um, and diffusing essential oils. And again, not all oils are great. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was why essential oils are such a great resource or such a great tool to use for aromatic use. So historically, we have used, or people in time have used essential oils um, because the benefits of essential oils through aromatic use is not, it's just not a new concept, um, but rather it's an idea that has been in practice for centuries. The practice of aromatherapy or the use of essential oils in plant extracts has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. So in Egypt, Rome, China, Greece, and India, essential oils were used frequently in rituals and religious practices. As these ancient people discovered, the essential oils had the ability to influence feelings and uplift the mood. Um, so the aromatic use of essential oils is also extremely convenient and simple. Uh, it also offers immediate benefits such as promoting a calm and stable environment, it helps to purify the air, manage, managing your mood and your emotions, and a lot more. So a simple way to experience the powerful power of essential oils, uh, with very, it's a very simple way to experience the power of essential oils with very little skill or knowledge. And aromatic use continues to be a popular ap application method in the essential oil world today. Uh, 
Um, so while the effect of using essential oils aromatically uh, prior was somewhat unexplained in ancient times, uh, recent significant research in the 1990s has helped biolog bio biologists understand how inhaling the scent of an essential oil could cause specific chemical sensors in the body to react. Um, and this research has helped to prove the notion of ancient civilizations that breathing in essential oils can have significant effect on emotion, mood, and the atmosphere. And each essential oil has a different chemical makeup, and each person has different emotions, memories, and reactions within the brain when inhaling an essential oil. And each person is going to experience something a little bit different from the other. And certain essential oils each have their own specific, specific chemical elements that help promote calming, they're relaxing, they're grounding, some are energizing, and promote soothing feelings. Um, another major benefit of using essential oils aromatically, thankfully that thing finally turned off, it's an it's a, uh, exhaust fan in my office. It's basically a sunroom. Um, so another major benefit of using essential oils aromatically is their ability to purify the air. Uh, dispelling unwanted odors and replacing them with pure pleasant scents is possible when you harness the power of potent high quality essential oils. Um, today, many air purifying agents that are sold to us readily uh, contain harmful toxins and chemicals, which makes the aromatic use of essential oils even more desirable. Um, and essential oils provide a safe, natural way to purify the air in any room without inhaling harmful toxins. So I am talking about doTERRA's essential oils. I'm not talking about all of the other stuff that um, is readily available online or, hi Jackie. Um, that is readily found on store shelves and even online. So it's really important to get a handle and inform yourself on um, the oils that you are looking to purchase. Um, not all essential oils are created equally, and that is the truth. So how do essential oils interact with the brain and the body when we use them aromatically? So the human sense of smell is a really powerful tool that we possess and the sense of smell can produce significant mental, emotional, and psychological, psychologic responses depending on the way that different aromas react with the brain. So as I mentioned previously, um, essential oils interact with chemical sensors in the brain and thus creating a response. And these chemical sensors are called olfactory sensors and they live in the olfactory system of the brain. I'm just following my notes so that I am staying on task because I'm a little bit of a squirrel sometimes. So of the brain, um, okay, so forgive me. The part of the brain that regulates our sense of smell, uh, the olfactory system, is connected to the limbic system where emotions and memories are stored. Um, and so this is why sometimes, um, you know, you'll catch the scent of rose and it'll remind you of your grandmother or um apple pie or um it it just it depends on 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 you and, and your past experiences with with aromas and the people in your life um, so when using essential oils aromatically the scent travels through the nose to the olfactory system where it is processed and then travels through the olfactory nerve to the limbic system and in the limbic system, the scent triggers responses to the brain based on memories and experiences. And because of these reactions in the brain, essential oils have a particularly powerful effect when applied aromatically. So due to the volatility of essential oils, aromatic use of essential oils is one of the most effective application methods. And so if you have an essential oil in your possession uh, that you have like sitting on a shelf or what have you someplace, um, you can probably, well, you, you can read the label and it probably advise you to not use it topically, to definitely not use it internally, and to only use it aromatically. And 
I would even go as far to caution you to like not even use that oil aromatically. If it's not safe enough to put on your skin, it's not safe enough for you to be using aromatically because uh, I feel like that is a, a huge red flag and a big indication that this oil is not what it says it is. So the chemical structure of essential oils, we're not gonna go crazy into this, but um, as we breathe in, um, in the scent of an essential oil, it triggers sp specific reactions in the brain, causing psychological reactions that can alter and improve our mood. And the reason of that is, is because of the chemical and structure, chemical, the chemical structure of essential oils. So you might be wondering, how does an essential oil provide calming and uplifting and, or energizing feelings? And this is due to their chemical makeup. So in most cases, essential oils can be classified as having uplifting or calming effects. Um, and you can see how a chemical structure of plants and essential oils allow them to provide specific uplifting, calming, and mood altering properties. So the mint family is commonly known to be uplifting and energizing. Um, it's due to its high concentration in ketones. Um, floral essential oils, typically compo composed of monoterpene alcohols, uh, provide calming characteristics. Um, trees, herbs, and grasses, they prim primarily include sesquiterpenes, oxides, and esters, which help promote soothing, grounding emotions, and feelings of renewal. The citruses contain chemical components like beta-pinene, monoterpenes, and limonene which contain significant uplifting characteristics. And then you have your spice oils. So your spice oils are phenols, which provide warming properties. So that's just a little bit of um, what you would get from different um, essential oil family. So how do we use essential oils aromatically? There's, you've got some options here and, and, it's, and it's great because versatility is something that I really appreciate. So although diffusers are a simple and easy way, you can see here that I have my diffuser pumping right now. I've got the Joyful Blend, which is Elevation. This is a really nice blend. Um, so uh, using a diffuser is a really simple way to use essential oils um, and there are countless other methods that will allow you to experience the aromatic benefits of essential oils through the air. So as you become more uh, familiar with essential oils, it is the easiest way to add variety to your options for aromatic use. Um, when I have new people come in to learning how to use essential oils, hi Karen, when we have, um, you know, they're leaning into to this, this idea of taking a natural approach or, um, you know, I, I highly encourage them to get their diffuser pumping every single day. Just get some, a few drops. You can do anywhere between three and 10 drops of essential oil, depending on the square footage of the room that you are occupying at the moment or that you are wanting to, um, you're wanting to aromatically enhance. Um, it's the easiest way. So as you become more fam familiar with your oils, um, it'll be easy to add the variety to your options for aromatic use. So if you take a look at some of the ideas that I'm about to suggest, um, it will help to broaden your horizons when it comes to using essential oils aromatically. So one of the first ways is to diffuse your essential oils during your yoga practice. It helps to promote feelings of relaxation, focusing, grounding, or energizing feelings. And we have a beautiful trio of yoga, a yoga um, collection that is anchoring, where are those beautiful oils? I think they're back there in that case right there. Um, but they're grounding, they're aligning, and they're anchoring. Maybe grounding isn't the, the right way. way. Um, so you can spray essential oils on clothing for a pleasant scent throughout the day. And I'm going to include where I get these tools so you can create a room spray or a yoga spray. 
you can add a drop of oil to a dryer, a wool dryer ball uh, with a batch of clean laundry. I don't use dryer sheets. I use uh, wool balls with essential oils. Uh, just a couple drops will do. I typically have lavender in my laundry room beside my On Guard Concentrate Laundry Soap. I'm going to add one or two drops of essential oils to a homemade surface cleaner. Um, I also love to add essential oils and reap the benefits to an Epsom salt bath and it really creates like a, a spa-like environment. It's really tranquil and, and calming and soothing. Uh, you can add essential oils to a cotton ball and place in the air vents of your car. You can also diffuse essential oils in your car during road trips to create a calming environment. You can find some really cool uh, little diffusers that plug into uh, a little uh, V adapter. You can also, this is another common way that we use air, uh, oils aromatically in our home, is we diffuse them to help to promote a relaxing environment and that will promote a restful sleep. And uh, so oils for that is serenity and lavender, cedar wood. Um, those are great common oils. And diffuse essential oils when studying for a test to help promote focus and motivation. We have a great blend that's the Intune blend. It's the focus blend. It's got rosemary and it's such a good oil. A few more ways I've got to share with you is you can place a drop of oil in your hand. This is great um, for um, peppermint. Peppermint's great. You just rub your hands together, cup the hands over your nose and inhale. Just like that. Um, you can diffuse essential oils uh, before work to promote self-confidence and after, works for, after work for relaxing relief after a long day. I'll tell you what, one of the first things that I do in the morning is I get my diffusers pumping and we have about five of them in the house. We've got one in each bedroom and basically one in every room. Um, and so my favorite for the family uh, to get them up and off to school is On Guard and for myself it's Wild Orange. Those are my favoritest and Elevation is also a really great one. Uh, Motivate is a really wonderful oil. Um, console, Peace and Serenity are great oils for the end of the day. Uh, but I like citruses and um, uh, immune boosting oils for the beginning of the day. Um, one of my other favorite things to do is to mix oils up in a little witch hazel and water and I use it to spritz over our furniture as a room spray and our carpets and our linens and any like curtains or drapes. Um, uh, wild orange on my work clothes puts me in a fantastic mood, right? Perfect for working with other people. Just elevates that mood, makes you feel like calm and buoyant. Um, so diffusing essential oils when you are expecting company to help or company is great to help make the air smell clean, fresh, and inviting. I do this when I have company come. I spray their linens uh, with lavender or wild orange, or I have the diffuser pumping in their room for them when they arrived. Um, one of my most favorite practices of using oils aromatically is to put a few drops, probably two or three, in the bottom of my shower. Um, as I, so I get, you, you know how you start the shower and you kind of have to let it get to the temperature that you're, you're, de, your desirable temperature. And then I get in and I put a few drops of Easy Air or the Breathe blend, which is our respiratory blend on the shower floor. Um, I keep it out of the water path so that um, the oil like rolls up and just, it's one of my most favorite ways. Um, and you can also, diffuse essential oils in your, well, I, I've already talked about this one, but I'm just going to say it again. Um, diffuse essential oils during your morning routine for an uplifting, invigorating start to your day. Totally do that every single day. Um, so if you just apply using essential oils aromatically in just these few simple ways, um, you're off to a great start. Not only are you starting off on the right foot, but you're cleaning out you're cleaning the air in your home, you're uplifting your mood. Um, it's just amazing. And uh, what else? The airborne, airborne stuff that you got floating around. Um, so stick a few drops of essential oils on a newspaper and place at the bottom of a trash can to help with eliminate any kind of trash can smells as well. 
Uh, another way um, that you can use it is also crossing over into a topical use is um, is in an aromatic. So here is a massage blend uh, with some essential oils in it. And this is dandelion oil um, with some grapefruit essential oil that my son made me for a Mother's Day gift. So that's another way to reap the benefits aromatically and using uh, essential oils in your armpits. So that's wafting up and you're reaping the benefits aromatically there too. Um, so those are all of the ways that we clean the air in our home. And I invite you to try what I've talked about today in your own home and see if you see a shift. Um, this is a great way to up-level up your, your home and your space and your mood and your lifestyle. So thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I'm Melissa Johnson, Central Oil Parlor. I'll catch you next time. Bye.